All right, so I did Lil Darky's new album. Lil Darky, never heard of him. This does not exist. I've never heard of him either. All right. Um, yeah, I wanted to do something or someone that I hadn't heard of before because I think that's just a good way to, to discover new music. Uh, I went through a couple of artists just skimming through their albums and one caught my eye. By the name alone, I wanted to do it. And I'm very glad I picked it. Uh, whether I like it or not is a different thing. But I am glad I found Old Mate Darkie here. The first track is called Rap Music. It has a, a few stages of life. It uh, The first being a very a very slappy bass. That sounds like it's from um, like an old rock song. This is it here. And he does like little talky things. Oh, that's groovy, man, is what he said. Uh, yeah, very, very slappy bass. Um, uh, so, yeah, like where he sort of like, he speaks a little bit between the bass. Uh, he says some things, one being like legitimate gibberish. Another being, for the people that, for the people that, for the people that, for the people that died. Then my favourite was, um, my mind flies, wide eyes, I cry. There you go. That is bloody wild. And I, I really like the chorus of this song. I'll play it just here. What do you think of this? <laughs> it reminds me of like, um... Bam, 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 bam. Bye, Betty. <laughs> Gabby said it's got a very Nickelodeon feel. Reminds me of that, what I just said, the bloody bam, bam. It oh, does sound like Betty. the bam, bam, bam. bam. <laughs> bloody, nah, what was the song I listened to? Um, Get Around or something like that? No, nah, it wasn't that. <laughs> I know what you mean, but I don't know. Now, believe it or not, this song, and most of his songs as well, have um, a lot more than what appears on the surface. Lil Darky is just having a little bit of fun here. It's not a serious song. But I think what he's saying can be interpreted, and it can be interpreted differently between people as well. Uh, he starts the verse off by saying, Ain't nobody dance no more. And to me, that, that doesn't mean that people are more serious these days, because I don't think that that's true. To me, that's a line towards growing old. You know, as you mature, you're no longer being silly. But then later on, he's got... And I'll bet, and I bet I'll see you lurking in the corner, you whore. And to me, that doesn't mean anything. Don't know if it means anything to you or not. Um, but one line that does mean something to me is, "I can't afford to be bored," which I really like. The um, life is very limited. The sheer odds you're here right now are incredible. Why are you wasting it being bored? You know, do something. So after you finish watching this episode, of course, then you can go and do something. No, then go watch the other episodes. <laughs> then go watch all the other episodes. We've got a lot. And then watch all of them on clips. And then the next episode will be out. <laughs> then you have to watch that one. Then you can go do something. <laughs> um, the the verse is more or less the same. Here's some more obvious lines like... um. Getting high is a lower form of life. Going slower than a slug or a bug in an arachnid webs, in arachnid webs. Started turning into a New Zealander there. Webs. Uh, I'm stuck. These heads in the back pretend. But then he's got um some other lines that are like, uh, fucking with the spider. Neighbor, pick a daisy, kick a bucket. Don't have anything for that. I could not know. Kick a bucket. What that means? Kick a bucket means like die. Yeah. What is? Fuck with the spider. Pick a daisy. Kick a bucket. Honestly, don't even know what that could mean. Um, it is a big album, though, so it's time to move on. The second song is called Good Morning, that, with morning being like, you know, you mourn the dead. Good Morgan. Good morning. I think that's um, German. Good Morgan. It does sound German. I don't know if it actually is or not. Nah, what's Guten Tag? That's Isn't that thank something. you? Or hello. One of those. I think it's one of those. I think it might be hello. No, no idea. Could be thank you. Da. That's something too. That's probably just, just yes. Yes, yeah. 
Did I just say I think that's French? <laughs> I meant to say yes. <laughs> I know what French for yes is. Yeah, we, C. Wait, no. C. <laughs> yes, oh, C is Spanish. You, you, mate, I thought you were ch- I'm being serious. <laughs> I like, couldn't see the cues on the facial expression. <laughs> So, um, yeah, with Good Morning, the production is very similar to something that JPEG Mafia would make. It's just got, like, less glitches. Um, after, like, half an hour of looking at the lyrics, I don't have any interpretation for them. Maybe someone else does. Maybe there isn't one. Maybe they can't even be interpreted. Uh, the chorus is, do or die, do or die, you're alive. Pussy, you won't, you won't. Uh, there's a lot of other lyrics that don't make much sense to me as well, but the end of the second verse really impressed me. I don't know how he wrapped it as fast as he did. I'm going to wrap it out. I'll read it out, and then I'll, I'll try to wrap it. He said, face the facts now. I face the pack down. I raise the dead now. You praise the lead. Pow. A son of a gun. I'm going to be not done. I'm going to go for it. I'm going to go. I'm, I'm a go and run for the fun of it till we got no son. I'm an anemone the way I'm hugging an enemy. No, you won't see the enemy. I ain't hear what you said to me. All the people are dead to me, like the back of a centipede. I ain't run you a fan of me, or annoying me mentally. That's a penalty strike, like you're grabbing the mic. I fight. I might bite. Sight right. The light smite shite. The white engulf. Grip tight. The sulfur height of the culture gripe. You vulture. Like, how does he... He does it so fast as well. Whose man is this? I'm going to give it a go. Face the facts now. I face the pack down. I raise the dead now. You praise the lead. Pow. The son of a gun. I'm not going to be done. I'm going to go f- go for a run for the fun of it till we got no son. I'm an, en- I'm an anemone the way I'm hugging an enemy. No, you won't see the enemy. I ain't hear what you said to me. All the people is dead to me like the back of a centipede. I ain't run. You offend me or annoy me mentally. That's a penalty strike like you're grabbing the mic. I fight a mic. Bite sight. Right. Light. Smite. Shite. The white and golf grip tight the sulfur height of the culture grip, you vulture. That was shit. I honestly don't know how he does that. What song is it? Good morning. I do want to play that. I don't know how the fuck he's done. Bless you. Uh, that is like... But like looking at those lyrics, I don't really know what some lines mean. I don't know what he's trying to say as a whole, or even if he's trying to say anything as a whole. Um, like I said earlier, I think with Darkie, whatever you interpret is right. Uh, the next track is called Composition 3 in Red, White and Black. It's even more crazy. I want to play the start of verse 3 for that one. That starts at 153. Uh, this, it is pretty crazy. Uh, the chorus I really like too. Um, he says, Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? I'll be drunk, walking steady off the alcohol and meddy. I'm addicted to not thinking. Uh, he does have a few sort of like anti drug lines throughout, and I really like the way he delivers them. He doesn't say drugs are bad, he just insults people that does them, which I think is an A class act. Uh, Move because you can is like a sheep song. In the chorus, he says, uh, Do that thing because another person said so. And he's basically saying, just think for yourself. Uh, in the post-chorus too, he says something, and I think he's referring to euthanasia with this. Uh, why, am I leave, why am I alive if I can't leave bed though? Why am I alive if I must be fed those hospital food bits stuck in my red flow? Um, moving on. Oh no, I'm not even done. Um, hospital food bits stuck in my red flow. Blood in my liver like a river till I'm dead ho. I do think he's referring to euthanasia. But moving on, the next song is called The Paint Walking. It's called that because he's got a line in there about having painted pants. So then the, the paint is walking. What a meme. I don't really know. Anyway, it's just one long verse. And I think it is like a bit of a throwaway song. It's like one of those songs. I know Eminem does this where he's just thrown common sense out of the window just to make more rhymes. Um, like he's not really saying anything that I can tell anyway, but it does sound good. Like, um, the way she played with my Vlastic pickle, I'm not very flaccid, nickel plated, fickle faded, the metal stoner grown a bone at a shower. Uh, next up, I am addicted to drugs and tired of it. 
This song is a little bit easier on the ears. There's no screaming or anything. He's fairly relaxed while rapping this one. And contrary to the name of the song, it's not an anti-drug track. In the chorus, uh, he does say he's addicted to drugs and sick of it as he rolls another stick of it. But the verses are wildly different. The second verse to me is an ode to marijuana. He says, this is an elegy to celery, a tribute to the green, a few times throughout. But the first verse is about being fake. It's about posers buying streams, deleting comments. Um, I want to read this verse out too, because this guy is legitimately talented. Uh, Spinning inverdently, grinning of no concern to me, churning my gullet, turns me, burning a metal furnace, earnest I deserve it, I sit in silence, because my mind is like an accurate wordage, or maybe courage with a flourish. Rid it, spit it, it finished, then release it, plays, increase it, rinse, repeat, and don't be cheating, deleting comments, and buy an interaction by packing that on the back end, and packing finances only through hacking. Your neighbor's wacker than a sack of some yak and Jack Daniels. In fact, throw it out, slowing down. What's my plan of attack? Growing sound, louder than a pound of that gasoline when it's slapping me, you're lacking tree. And passing these spliffies I've been packaging and packing in wax, whack, rappers eat crap, flack jacket in Casey shat, plastering the walls and splattering us all it's happened i smoke the shattered till i fall bitch. bitch but that that sounds like something that m would write that is fucking insane to have plucked this fella out of thin air i'm a lucky man like the first episode of the year as well uh where is darky is next up and the man has just thrown me another goddamn curveball right when i thought i figured the man out right when i, I thought i knew what he was about he gives me this Like, he was just screaming on the last track. Now he's singing over a guitar beat with birds chirping in the background. Um, he's not a great singer, but he's definitely not bad. And as far as I can tell, the track is about a woman. He's being very honest about himself, saying he's got a lot of problems. So I think with the type of song that it is, he doesn't need to be a good singer. You know, it's, a very, it's an honest and raw song with a raw performance. It, it matches up. Uh, he's got one weird as fuck line in there, though. Mama, I'm so sorry for my species' treachery against you. Let's make love. I think he's talking about Mother Nature. Oh. <clears throat> I think he might be there. See, that's what he does to you. He says shit that means something else on surface level. When you think about it, he's spitting straight facts. Right. I hope he's talking about Mother Nature. <laughs> Uh, the very next song is back to heavy distortion and screaming. It's appropriately called Blood Money. To me, it's about some apocalyptic shit. He starts off in one verse by rapping about some current world events. Overseas or something, for God knows for what reason, pumping oil abundant, funding hunting of human people to sell more guns in, the hundred. Mum, who's bombing London, a cunt did. It's not wrong. So, yeah, basically just saying, like, shit's going down. Then in the refrain, he says, uh, Learn how to grow your own food before they stop feeding you, needing you alive, your survival is nigh. Which is making it seem like it's, you know, post-apocalyptic. He's, like, sort of foreshadowing the, the collapse of the world in the future. But then in verse 3, he says, Children bleed moving through the streets. Stupid, no, you need to do it. That's some clean shooting, toe tag, another bone da- Another bone bag that ain't had no chance. Dumb muddy wartime. Got a store mine. Want a saw hire. Blood money. Which sort of snaps it back. And it's just saying like, nah, this is just the hood. I think that's really clever. He sets it up thinking like, the world is falling apart. Then he says something that makes it seem like the world has fallen apart. It's post-apocalyptic. And then he just says like, nah, this is just what the hood's like. I think that's like really clever. Uh, the Sands of Time is up next. It's a very weird song. Almost certain this one doesn't mean anything. Maybe some lines are meant to mean things by themselves, but there's no way this one song has any meaning. Uh, I'll read out some lines. <clears throat> I've been walking the block with the pen, not rocking with my cock by the fire and pen. Sometimes I've been talking, I would rather you don't know my hand. So I'd like to rather, yeah, talk to my hand. Um... I'm robbing that cop for his pants. Don't know what that could possibly mean. Maybe they got paint on them. Uh, Dennis is acting a menace. Table tennis, ping pong, sing song. Do not talk to your dentist. 
Don't talk to your dentist. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck that could possibly mean. Uh, it was all over a very like ethereal type synth. It sounded very otherworldly. Uh, the next track is called Ego Death. Every single song I've heard that's called Ego Death is weird. Every time. I don't know what any of the verses could be saying. Uh, the chorus just says, where did I come from? Where did everything go now? A couple of times. So that's like the only thing I can see that relates to the name Ego Death. Uh, but at one point he does say, Seagull ain't no pest. They respect the seagulls. I do have to give you him... You actually do have to respect them. I do have to give him props for somehow squeezing that in. Mate, in Vancouver, or oh. maybe in Canada in general, the seagulls are seagulls. fucking huge. <laughs> They're literally... something else. They can't be just seagulls. <laughs> Our seagulls are like half that size. If you're a Canadian and you see seagulls... Mate, you're a freak. They're huge. <laughs> um, composition 11 is up next. It's a very pleasant beat. I like it a lot. Uh, it's a song about a lady just after a breakup. Uh, he says things like... Go tell your friends whatever you want, but fuck whatever you say. I think that's pretty funny. And there's this really cool bit, <clears throat> bit that I want to play. This is really, really nice. It's at 2 minutes and 11 seconds. Oh, no, 18 seconds. I don't know why I said 11. That's so nice. I'm going to play that again. I really like that. That's clean. And then he's got a bloody trumpet solo in the back end of the song. This man is just wild. Every time that song comes on, I'm just waiting for that little little line, just because of how clean it sounds. On to the second last track. I am going to stop doing drugs. The old slap and bass is back. Uh, he's back to screaming. The track just details the negative things that can happen to you when you do drugs. But right at the end, you hear someone doing doing a whiz. And then he says, it's bad manners to use the restroom when you're on the phone to someone because they can hear your bowel movements. Be a good person. I do it when I pee. What, like you're on the phone to someone when you pee? Yeah, or the Xbox. But <laughs> headset, got the boys on. <laughs> oh, man, Well, that's basically on the phone. We don't use the headsets anymore, but yeah. Not when I do the bowel movements, though. That's too far. Well, Unless peeing you... is a bowel movement. Well, you know what I mean. Unless you press yeah, the... Definitely. I press the mute sometimes. <laughs> I've gotten to the, the point with my missus where we just shit with the door open. Nah, that's too much stank out. <laughs> right, is that your review? No, nah, not oh, yet. Oh, you're still going. Nah, second last song talk, ends with someone... Doing a bowel movement. Yeah, being a urine. Uh, being no. a urine. <laughs> <laughs> the very last song is called Rap Music which was the title of the first song, but this time it's got a W in front of it because the album is wrapping up. Mm. I actually really like that. That's so... It's silly, but it's really nice. He starts the track off by saying, it's okay for music to not be about anything. Jesus fucking Christ! And then he starts the song. Don't have too much to comment on this track, but I do have a line that I really liked. Um... I put the chrome to the front of your dome and say, please stop littering and jittering so much with the finger I could touch on the trigger like the clutch switch gears ditch peers that be rolling up a dutch. I really like that. Like that topic switch was smooth. Like trigger like the clutch switch gears. Because clutching gears are like a car. That, that, I really like that a lot. Uh, the album was not what I expected at all. I like that it's different. I'm very glad that I listened to it. And I think this is what JPEG Mafia wants to be. The only faults I can give this man that, as a whole, the album didn't have much cohesion, like as one piece. I don't know if he wanted it to be, but I think that's what albums should be. Um, it would go from heavy metal feel to a pleasant guitar beat to experimental rap, back to heavy metal, and then like a lo-fi beat up next. Um, the album wasn't a story, so I, I don't really see any problems with switching the order of some songs around, and I think that would have improved it. But maybe he had a reason to have it the way that he did. But that's just my thinking. I'm giving it a 7.5 out of 10. There you go. Starting strong. <laughs>